Hello and welcome back to Higher Maths, Functions and Graphs. Today we're going to look at composite functions, a topic that comes up in the exam very, very often. So we do need to know how to do this. It should be straightforward marks. So two functions can be composed to form a new composite function. So for example, if I am doubling a number and then adding one, that is a combination of two separate operations. I'm doubling it, then adding one. So that is a composite function because there's more than one thing going on there. I'm doubling, then adding one. So let's have a look at another example. If we have a squaring function and a halving function, we can compose them to form a new function. We take the output from one and use it as the input for the other. So we start off with x or just any number we could take. We square it. Then we half it. So for example, let's take three. Three squared is nine. Half of nine is nine halves or two holes and one quarter. So the order is important as we'll get a different result in another case. So here we're starting with x. We're halving x first. So we'll get x divided by two. And then we are squaring the answer. So remember when we're squaring x divided by two, we'll get x times x over two times two. So we end up with x squared divided by four, or one quarter of x squared. So if I substitute three in, remember in the first one, we ended up with three squared over two, which is nine halves. Here, if I substitute in three, I end up with three squared over four, which is nine quarters. So the order is important. The order is definitely important. So using function notation, we have, say, f of x equals x squared, so as us squaring something. So if I was doing f of three, that would be three squared. And g of x equals x over two. So if I was doing g of nine, that would be nine over two. So the di diagrams above show the composite function. So I've, we've just talked through those. So this is the important bit, guys. This is what we need to understand. So if I'm doing g of f of x, what I would do, I would say, right, what is f of x? f of x is x squared. So I'll just rewrite that as g of x squared. So all I have done there is substituted in what f of x is into this bracket. Okay, so I've said, what is f of x? Well, f of x is x squared. So that becomes g of x squared. And then what does g tell me to do? It tells me to do x divided by 2. So here, g of x is x divided by 2. So if we were doing g of 7, it would be 7 divided by 2. If we're doing g of 19, it would be 19 divided by 2. g of minus 4, minus 4 divided by 2. g of a would be a divided by 2. g of a squared would be a squared divided by 2. Now g of x squared, again, just substituting whatever is in this bracket, 4x would be x squared divided by 2. So I'll say that again. Whatever's in that bracket is substituted in for x here. So g of x squared, I'm replacing any x with an x squared. So x squared divided by 2. So here, f of g of x, well, what is g of x? g of x is x over 2, x divided by 2. So f of x over 2 says whatever is in the bracket, I replace the x with here. So f of x is x squared, so f of 7 would be 7 squared, f of 9 would be 9 squared, f of negative 3 would be negative 3 squared. f of a would be a squared, f of c would be c squared. f of c divided by 2 would be c divided by 2, all squared. So f of x divided by 2 would be x divided by 2, all squared, which is x times x, x squared over 2 times 2, which is 4. So every time we are just substituting in, it is just substitution. Okay. Double substitution, in fact. So you're substituting in for f of x. Then you're doing g of x squared, which requires you to substitute a second time. Okay, right. So we've had the introduction there, guys. I'll do a separate video for examples one and two.